This tutorial will discuss how to create an Omniplex topology using the Topology Wizard. An Omniplex topology is a configuration of the system's hardware and signal processing components. The flow of signals and data is shown as a diagram in Omniplex server, and the configuration is saved to a file with the extension PXS. Learning how to create a topology will give you a better understanding of Omniplex, and Server's Topology Wizard makes it easy to define a topology. In many cases, you, or the person who set up your system, will create a topology once, and you will rarely need to create a new one. You will spend most of your time working with Plex Control, the main user interface in Omniplex. Plex Control communicates with Server to carry out your commands. If Omniplex is already running, please close Plex Control and Server. You cannot change the system configuration while Plex Control is open or while data acquisition is running. If Omniplex is not running, make sure that your Omniplex chassis is connected and powered on. Remember that you must power on the chassis before booting up Windows. Otherwise, the PC will not see the chassis. If you are not sure, power on the chassis and then reboot Windows before continuing. Start Omniplex Server by double-clicking the icon on the desktop. When the window opens, you will notice that there is already a topology loaded in Server. By default, Server always loads the most recently used topology. For this tutorial, we will create a new topology which will replace this one. If there's a green progress bar at the bottom of the server window, wait for it to finish. If no topology loaded automatically, you will see a blank area like this. In either case, to create a new topology, click the Topology Wizard button in the toolbar. The Topology Wizard allows you to describe your system's hardware and then creates a topology, including the appropriate hardware support plus all the software components needed for filtering, thresholding, and spike sorting. Let's look at the Topology Wizard options. The section labeled A to D device is where you indicate the main data acquisition device in your system. The first option, AD64, is also what we refer to as an Omniplex A system which was the original version of Omniplex and still in use in many labs. If you have this hardware, you will have a blue amplifier box that looks like this. This box will be connected by one or more ribbon cables to an AD64 card in the chassis, plus a single blue cable connected to an AmpLink chassis card. Systems with greater than 64 channels use two blue boxes, two amp link cards, and two AD64 cards, but when creating a topology, all you need to know is the total channel count. The next two A to D devices listed are the DigiAmp and the Mini DigiAmp, or Mini Digi. These devices are also blue front-end boxes that work with analog head stages, but unlike the Omniplex A amplifier, they contain A to D converters and send digitized data to a data link card in the chassis over the blue link cable. No analog ribbon cables are used. If you select either DigiAmp or Mini Digi, the section to the right, DigiAmp HST Gain, will be enabled. This is where you indicate whether you are using Unity Gain or G1 or Gain of 20 or G20 analog head stages. Omniplex needs to know this so that it can display and record signals with the correct voltage scaling. The next AD device is the Test ADC device. This is not an actual hardware device, but a software emulator that plays back recorded data from a file. We won't go into the details other than to mention that it's used in the free demo version of Omniplex, which can be downloaded from Plexon.com and run without any hardware or a license. The last A to D device is the Digital Head Stage Processor, or DHP. This device looks similar to a mini Digibox, but the DHP is for use with digital head stages only. One DHP can support up to 512 channels of digital head stages. 
Select the A to D device corresponding to the hardware that is present in your system. Before continuing, make sure that the blue box is connected to the AMP link or data link card with the blue link cable. Above the A to D device section is Trodality. This section is where you select whether you'll be working with single electrodes, stereotrodes, or tetrodes. Leave it at the default single electrode setting for now. To the right of this is channel count. In total A to D channels, enter the total number of channels in your system, for example, 32. If you're not sure how many channels of hardware you have, leave it at 16 channels for this topology, since all systems have at least 16 channels. You only need to change the total A to D channels field, and the other channel counts are automatically updated. Keep in mind that you don't have to use all of the channels that you specify in the topology. You can disable unused channels later in Plex Control. Below this, you can select the number of DI cards, which is the number of digital input cards. Most systems have a single DI card, so you don't have to change anything here. Below this is the setting for the AUX AI card, which is often referred to as the AI card. This is a 32-channel AD card that is typically used to digitize non-neural analog signals, for example, eye position. If your system has an AI card, it's the card labeled Auxiliary I.O., usually the rightmost card, with a breakout panel to its right. There are three options for configuring the AI card. The first option, 32 channel, 5 kHz max, is fine for most uses. With this option, you can use all 32 channels and the maximum digitizing rate is 5 kHz per channel. The default rate will be 1 kHz. If you have the optional fast AI card, then the next two options are also available. You can choose between using all 32 channels at a maximum rate of 20 kHz per channel or using a maximum of only four channels, but at a maximum rate of 250 kilohertz per channel. If your system has an AUX AI card, go ahead and select the default 32 channel 5 kilohertz maximum option. If your system does not have an AUX AI card, select none. Now let's look at additional device clients. For this option, all you need to know is that it's okay to leave Cineplex interface checked even if you're not using a Cineplex video tracking system. And for now, please leave global filter unchecked. We have now completely specified the system configuration and are ready to create a topology. Click OK. Once the topology has been created, you will see a Save As box. It will show you the file name of the new topology and the folder in which it will be saved. You can edit the file name or change the folder before clicking Save. You will be asked to close and restart server. Click OK and then save your topology. Now close server and start it again from the desktop shortcut. Server will automatically load the topology you created. If you like, you can start Plex Control and start data acquisition to verify that your new topology is working as intended. You can either start Plex Control from the desktop shortcut or by going to the Run menu in Server and selecting Plex Control. The main Plex Control window will appear. If the Plex Control window does not look similar to this one, click Create View Layout for Sources to restore it to a default view layout. Now click Start Data Acquisition. At this point, you should see traces moving across the screen in the continuous views. Even if you don't have any input signals or head stages connected, you should at least see flatline traces sweeping from left to right in the continuous views. For more information on topologies and system configurations, please see the Omniplex User Guide. 
Contact support at plexon.com if you need assistance with your Omniplex system. Thank you for watching this tutorial.